Thank you. I thank the program committee for the opportunity to present in the plenary session. When we reflect on conventional gene discovery, we acknowledge its great accomplishment, the identification of the molecular genetic basis of many Mendelian disorders that has often been the starting point for the understanding of the function of thousands of genes. These traditional methods that we have used include cytogenetic analysis, gene mapping, sequence analysis of candidate genes, and more recently, chromosome microarray analysis. But despite our successes, the molecular basis of most Mendelian disorders remains unknown. Why is this so? What are the limitations to gene discovery? Small sample sizes. Many of the remaining disorders are rare disorders. And any individual investigator may not have a sample size large enough. Some of them have a predominance of simplex cases, that is, a single occurrence within a family. There may be reduced penetrance. Not all who carry a gene may be affected. There's variable expressivity. The degree to which someone is affected can vary within affected individuals. And finally, there might be genetic heterogeneity. There may be different genes underlying a specific disorder. So by applying new technology, we have taken the opportunity to address this issue by asking the research question. Can we use exome sequencing to find the molecular basis of rare Mendelian disorders? And the disorder I'll talk about today is Kabuki syndrome. Kabuki syndrome, occasionally called Nikawa Kuroki syndrome, was first described in 1981 by two Japanese groups. The name derived from the patient's facial resemblance to a Kabuki actor. Over 400 cases have been reported with an estimated prevalence of 1 in 32,000. Kabuki syndrome is a multi-system congenital anomaly syndrome whose defining features are characteristic facies. These facial features are illustrated in the photo of the young girl on the right with long palpebral fissures and high arched eyebrows that are often interrupted um, and sparse to the side of them. Other characteristic features may include prominent ears and a depressed nasal tip. Systemic involvement frequently includes cleft palate, cardiovascular malformations, and renal anomalies. Most individuals have mild to moderate intellectual disability. The characteristic facies of Kabuki syndrome um, may not emerge until um, are become more prominent and recognizable with age, as shown in this young girl at five weeks of age, 15 months of age, and three and a half years of age. For almost three decades, the basis of Kabuki syndrome remained unknown. What were the major impediments to gene identification? One is the vast majority of cases of Kabuki syndrome are simplex cases. There are less than 20 familial cases in the literature. But we can glean from those cases that Kabuki might be an autosomal dominant disorder with a high frequency of de novo mutational events. And we have seen that the causative gene or genes have not been identified by our conventional strategies. I will next talk about how we applied exome sequencing strategy to study 10 individuals with Kabuki syndrome. To apply exome sequencing successfully, we developed several series of filtering strategies to examine all of the gene variants that we would discover in the probands. Here is an example of how this strategy is set up in a table format. First, we identify the intersection of any non-synonymous coding single nucleotide polymorphism, splice site variant, or coding insertion deletion in successive probands. Next, we exclude known variants that are present in databases such as DBSNP, the 1000 Genome Project, or other exomes already sequenced. Finally, we applied a variety of additional filters, usually some form of functional annotation that allowed us to reduce the number of genes to analyze. On the next slide, I will show what ultimately worked for us after trying several different strategies and iterations. Here are the results 
of analyzing the variants in the exome sequencing of 10 individuals with Kabuki syndrome. The sequential filtering strategy is shown row by row. In the first row of the table, we track the variants that were common in any one, two, three, through 10 probands that were the non-synonymous C-SNPs, splice site, or coding insertion deletions. In the second row, we exclude the known variants in DB-SNP, the 1,000 genomes, or in control exomes already sequenced. This led to one large gene, MUC16, a mucin gene, that has shown up in several other exome screens as being polymorphic. So we went back and um, applied, we tried several other functional annotations, including phenotype stratification, but as illustrated in the Nature Genetics manuscript published online in August, if we included only the truncating variants that cause a nonsense or frame shift insertion deletion, we reduce our complexity to a single candidate gene. Of the 10 exons, seven were found to have a loss of function mutation in only one gene, which is MLL2 on chromosome 12, also known by several other names. Two additional individuals in this cohort were later found to either have a small insertion or deletion variant when they were subjected to conventional Sanger dideoxy sequencing. So the eighth and ninth individual here were false negatives by exome sequencing. The insertion and deletion variant was only found by Sanger sequencing. Here are the photos of the 10 probands from which the exome data was generated. Um, they are stratified here by their facial phenotype. Only one individual, outlined in the red box here, did not have an MLO2 loss of function or truncating variant by either method of sequencing. We needed to verify our results in a large cohort, so we reached out to an international group of collaborators who we knew also had collected cohorts of individuals with Kabuki syndrome. We are grateful to them for participating um, because this study is an example of how our work together can solve problems in rare disorders and will ultimately benefit our clinical patients. Our current cohort consists of one set of concordant monozygotic twins and three affected parent-offspring pairs. A summary of the types of heterozygous mutations identified in MLL2 from the cohort is displayed here. Truncating nonsense and frame shift mutations in light blue, missense mutations in yellow, and others in gray. This slide shows a diagrammatic representation of where these mutations have occurred within the MLL2 gene. At the top, the protein domains of the MLL2 protein are shown such as the plant homeo domains, abbreviated PHD, and the catalytic set domain at the um, C terminus of the protein. In the middle, the 54 exons of the MLL2 gene are shown with identified mutations listed below each exon. The mutations are predominantly in the three prime end of the gene with several large exons with many mutations reflecting the exon size. In exon 39, um, several polyglutamine tracks are encoded, and we find multiple glutamine codons mutated to nonsense codons. If we try to group probands by mutation type, either truncating nonsense or frame shift versus those with missense mutations, we find that there are no striking differences, although larger numbers are needed to know if a significant trend occurs in those with cleft palate, congenital heart defect, or a renal anomaly. To summarize our results of sequencing, we have found that 78% have an MLL2 mutation. Within all mutations, 73% are truncating mutations. And then we have 25 mutations that have been confirmed as de novo mutations that are not present in either of their parent. And two of the three familial cases have an ML2 mutation, including the pair shown in the photo on the right with a nonsense mutation. You might ask about the individuals in our cohort who are ML2 mutation negative. When we compare by the presence or absence of an ML2 mutation, um, 
there are not striking differences except for the presence of a renal anomaly, which appears to be more common in those with a mutation than those without. Photographs of some of the 23 individuals with Kabuki syndrome without an identified MLL2 mutation are shown here, including one individual here who's the proban of a parent offspring pair with no mutation. All have been diagnosed with Kabuki syndrome and have had chromosome microarray studies. Possible reasons why no mutation was found include that they have an unidentified MLL2 mutation missed by our sequencing in chromosome microarray. They have a mutation in another gene responsible for Kabuki syndrome if there is genetic heterogeneity, or they have been misclassified and have an alternative diagnosis.